I'm Horace Dowdy, elected to Virginia, and each Thursday I bring you a local history lesson from a, one of the volumes which I have written, History Lessons from a Country Church, and I encourage you if you want to own these books, uh, they're available on Amazon, also at the down, uh, Downtown Books in Lexington and the Bookery. Today, the lesson is Margaret Preston, Lexington's song maker. Lexington, Virginia was a village of 1,000 people. The little town could not have realized the significance of the stagecoach arrival one December night in 1848. Heavy snowfall had disrupted all normal schedules. Dr. George Junkin and his family climbed from the coach at midnight. He was the new president of Washington College. Dr. Junkin had acquired a national reputation as an orator, a teacher, and Presbyterian pastor. The greater influences of his auburn-haired daughter eventually eclipsed him. Little Maggie was only five feet tall, but she was a powerhouse in both mind and body. Her father had carefully instructed his firstborn himself. She never became a professor, although she knew more about most subjects than any college instructor. She was fluent in Greek, Latin, French, and English. She understood science and higher mathematics. She had virtually memorized the Bible. Maggie's scholastic proverbs did not keep her indoors. She baffled at Lexington women with the athletic hiking miles at a stretch at night or day. Margaret was 28 years old when she first saw Lexington. It was to be her home for the remainder of her remarkable life except for the last five years spent in Baltimore. From earliest childhood, Maggie was tutored by her own brilliant father. She was obviously born to be a writer. Words eloquently spoken or written fascinated her. Maggie played at manipulating human language and never tired of writing down what she thought. Then she would rephrase and rewrite the thought until the sequence and the meter sounded right. Thus our small heroine gradually developed into the poetess of the South. From the highland village of Rockbridge County, Lexington, her poetic creations eventually spread across the world. Maggie's younger sister, Eleanor, married an eccentric BMI professor named Thomas Jackson, later known as Stonewall. Fourteen months after the marriage, Ellie died during delivery of a stillborn child. Shared agony drew the broken-hearted professor and his grieving sister-in-law. Their once cool relationship to be deepened into love. Thomas and Margaret probably would have married had they not both been Presbyterians and the Confession of Faith explicitly condemned any man who would marry his deceased wife's sister. That rule was finally abandoned near the beginning of the 20th century, too late for that frustrated couple. The course of life changed abruptly for Maggie when her close friend, Sally Preston, the wife of John, died. He was the flamboyant BMI professor Sally and John had seven children. The young mother had a premonition that her final pregnancy would end in death, and she urged that if it did happen, Margaret Junkin, you are to take my place. Sally's prediction came true. Major Preston was blinded by grief for many months, but finally began to see some promise of renewed happiness in the lovely Margaret. He courted her. Finally, Maggie consented, despite the oft-expressed vow never to marry a widowed man, especially if he had children. She was 38 years old and he was 47. John and Maggie seemed to really be blessed with happiness in marriage. John and his children as well. One year later, in July of 1858, Maggie gave birth for her child, whom she named after her father, George Junkin, George Junkin Preston. Two years later, she delivered another healthy son, her second and last child, 
and this little poetess, who had earlier resigned herself to life as a spinster, was now in charge of the most prominent Lexington household. With a family of 11 to care for, there was little time for writing. The Civil War forced Maggie to take up her art again. Margaret Junkin Preston produced and published her most widely acclaimed book entitled Beechenbrook, A Rhyme of War. What is Beechenbrook? Today we call the area Jordan's Point. At Lexington, under the cliffs of Barry River, formerly called North River, the book proved to be very popular and went through eight printings. And with those profits, Margaret built Beechenbrook Presbyterian Church, the quaint Gothic structure still sad today, but it is no longer a church, near the south end of the East Lexington Bridge. Margaret lived, loved, and lived in Lexington. Her graceful writings sing of the beauty of Rockbridge County. She describes the people as extraordinarily loving. The social whirl of Paris had less attraction for her than the nature trails along her childhood river. When tragedies came as they happened, Maggie would seek the seclusion of the forest, and there she found therapy in writing. Our small heroine had cared for her dying mother, then her sister Ellie, and then her distinguished father had been forced to leave Lexington forever because of his resistance to Virginia's secession, and her sister Julia's boyfriend was murdered at the door of the Lexington Presbyterian Church one Sunday while she sat in the pew. Her brother-in-law Stonewall died in the war. Four of Colonel Preston's children, strongly attached to their stepmother Maggie, died in the first years of her marriage. Maggie's poems poured forth constantly a moving mixture of pathos and war and power. I urge you, Read Beechenbrook and weep. Read her biography, Margaret, written by Mary Cooley, another gifted Lexington author. Drive out to Jordan's Point and look at the Beechenbrook Church. We should never permit the eloquence of Maggie Preston to disappear after she's done so much for us. Be aware that Maggie's husband was a sportsman. He loved the streams and forests. He hunted and fished regularly with Bob Hamilton, founder of Hamilton's church just upstream from Oxford Church. The Oxford name would have sounded familiar to Maggie. Before moving to Rockbridge, she had lived in both Oxford, Ohio, and Oxford, Pennsylvania. Maggie wrote 18 church hymns for the Voice of Praise, a songbook used all over in the Presbyterian churches a century ago. She also produced church school literature and lessons for children. We are indebted indeed to this noble lady, Margaret Junkin Preston.